His new book is called After Further Review, My Life, including the infamous, controversial, and unforgettable calls that changed the NFL. He is Fox Rules analyst and a good friend of mine and this program, Mike Pereira. Good to see you, Mike. How are you, sir? I am great. You know, I could have had a longer title, huh? You, you know? could have. You know, you could Gee. put the you could put it on the back. Yeah. And so you've got you've got quotes from Joe Buck. Yes, I do. Troy Aikman. Yes, I do. Jerry Mark Bright. Oh, absolutely. And David Hill. Absolutely. Yeah. What does know. what Mike does is a vital service, not only to fans, but to the National Football League. Would the NFL agree with that, Mike? <laughs> not recently <laughs> well it's good to see you here that's great to be here yeah, it is bet. great to be here i want to talk about let's let's do like an old nfl let's total access let's segment. do it the let's official review that started let's this go. whole let's thing break now, it down. You, now you're you're an empire let's you've got go. books you've got you've got fox you've got okay let's move was it called big fox right mm -hmm. mike is he's on big yes, fox he's on big fox, Are you I, on little I, spend, fox too? I spend more time on little fox than i do big <laughs> okay. fox, yeah. that's fine i think i'm i think I'm, way, in, I think I'm on fox sports 7 i think that's the one oh I'm the ocho on. no you're on the ocho <laughs> oh the ocho, the, oh, yeah. Yeah. The the ocho. <laughs> so terrell Pryor uh flips the ball at a referee after catching the ball in the red zone of a game that is tightly contested with 20 some odd seconds to go and instead of it being ball in the 11 yard line it's offsetting penalties because the ball hits Webb as prior throws it back to the official and it's called offsetting penalties this absolutely uh helped change at least the tenor of the finale of the game what, what gives here mike what gives here oh, this is one of those what i used to just look at it when i worked in the league office and go Ugh, yeah <laughs> Um, technically, you know, you can't drop the ball on a player. You know, did, was he giving it to the official? The official had his hands extended. You know, this wasn't kind of an in-your-face type thing. I, technically, it is. But, you know, there's – in football, I call it an officiating art versus science. Yes. Okay. A scientist, that's a foul. An artist, it's not. And, but we're and not I scientists think, I think, here. I think, I think the art needs to factor in. And, and to me, they'd have been a lot better well, off if they wouldn't have called Why that. can't Dean Blandino, who I'm sure is maybe having the same reaction as you, now the current VP of NFL reps, mm -hmm. why can't he get on the phone while this is being discussed to get on the phone and get in the ear of one of these officials? We have technology. They all have earpieces and microphones now to say, pick that flag yeah, up. Yeah, but he's not, allowed, up. he's not allowed to do well, that. Well, why I can't think, we change yeah, that I rule? Think, yeah, but, well, the, I think if you change it, we'd go back to your thing. I think what you talked about, that make everything reviewable. You yeah. can look and give input on everything. I think you have to have guidelines. I think there has to be some guidelines. And, and I think, you know, the other thing with, you know, Dean Blandino could be looking, there's 10 games going on at once. So to think that he's going to be watching this particular play or you're going to hold it up so that he can look at the play. I think it's a very slippery slope. I just, you know, common sense to me. They'll support this call, by the way. Who? But common sense, I think the league will. Well, in but public common maybe, sense, but common behind... sense to me is like they say to this crew or they say that. Hey, yeah. what, but is this yeah. the, does, the, does that noise come in the form of a downgrade? Um, no, it, probably not. A grant. They'll, they'll call it. They have a grade that's called like a will support, but. So it's a will support, but don't call it again. So then you don't support it. Uh, I mean, you got to support taunting r rules. Yeah. Obviously, these are it, these are good it's, rules it's, in place for a good reason. But yeah. that's ridiculous. Okay, I, I get it. I don't like it either. All right, that's like one it. play. Now let's go to the Tyler Boyd fumble called, reviewed, and upheld in the Bengals Steelers game at the end of a hotly contested rain fest in Heinz Field. What did you make of this call with uh, less than two minutes to go, Mike? Well, I think it's, I mean, I, I think he's down. I do think he's down. Um, but I can't absolutely prove it because you can't see the ball really when the knee hits the ground. Mm -hmm. Is it already beginning to slide out when the knee hits the ground? Um, you know, I, Eli Manning had a similar play where they ruled a fumble and he yes. had a hand on the ball against his leg. Yes. And I thought that one was down. But I, I, I'm going to say this about Dean and about those making the decisions in replay. They have been very consistent, very consistent. It's almost like saying, if I, if I like have any question, yes. then I'm going to stay with the call on the field. And the misconception that people have is that when you go under the hood to look at a play, whether it's Dean and Al River on in New York or the replay official on site, you have a bias going in, and there's a bias. It's not like you're looking cold turkey and you're going to make a decision. There's a bias going in that says the ruling on the field is correct, and you have to prove that ruling wrong 100%. So I, I, I think I'm good. I never get mad if somebody stays with the call on the field, even if I think that it should be reversed. 
I'm okay with that. If it's not 100% obvious, and as long as they're consistent, which at least through this point, I think they have. Mike Pereira, the author of After Further Review, which you can get in bookstores and online right now, and also Fox Rules analyst, former VP of NFL officiating, joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. Uh, the catch rule, where, where do you stand? Where, where are, are we any closer to any sort of resolution here? Because people well, still get confused, I mean, Mike. I, I, I'm, I'm two for two. Okay, I'm two weeks in a row where I get it, I understand it, I haven't been crossed up by a decision. You know, I'm clear. Look, I know there's an I and Mike and Pereira, but some of the fans I, aren't no, two for two I, I here, Mike. I get it, but the fans don't look at as many plays as I look. So what can you tell folks? Because he, he, my, my timeline here's, explodes here's what, here's every what weekend. You, here's what you have to do. The first thing you have to look at, the very first thing you have to look at is to make the decision whether the receiver is going to the ground or he's on his feet. If he's going directly to the ground, then he has to hold on to the ball when his entire body hits the ground. If the ball comes out, it's incomplete. If he maintains control and rolls over, that initial contact with his entire body on the ground doesn't knock it out, and then it comes out like T.Y. Hilton last week, that's a catch consistently done by uh, in, in replay. And the other thing, when you're on your feet, it's this whole notion of time. You know, you had the play on the sideline, um, wh which game it was, I forget, where the receiver got the ball, controlled it, yeah. went out of bounds on his feet. After he was out of bounds, then the ball got stripped out. The element of time was there. I'm getting it. But the first thing is, is he, is he going directly to the ground? Not scooting upfield, putting a hand down, and then extending it directly, bam, to the ground. If he is, you got to hold on the ball, period. And if he's not, if he's on his feet, they're just the element of time. It'll always be confusing, and it doesn't belong in replay, in my opinion. But at least I'm closer. I think I'm there You're at there. this point. But I'll get crossed. Very, and by the way, radio audience, you should know that that entire catch soliloquy was delivered directly to camera. Mike, you looked directly at the jib camera that entire, and you like you Boy, stared it down. You stared it down. I'm trying to impress the point <laughs> that I finally got it. What am I going to look at you? I mean, come on, I'm talking to them. I'm, I'm the one who got yes asked, or no. Yes you or no. Ask the question. Yes. I mean, but I'm talking to them. Yes you, you said you're the fans. The one, and I'm talking to them. Yes or no. I got what? rid of the catch rule, or the uh, tuck rule in the NFL. Yes or no? I got rid of the tuck. <laughs> they had yes to get rid. No. They had. To, they had. To, I had to move on before they did. But yes. <laughs> No question. Yeah, I'll look right at you and say that. Yes. Yes. I helped get rid of the tuck rule. No, you probably did get rid of it. Head of NFL refs formally saying that to me right here. Let's take a break. In 60 ticks of the clock, I want to talk about this whole concept of bringing the targeting rule from college to the pros. Okay. Because I think it's gonna be, it would be a major problem as it's currently constituted the way that you and I have had a conversation about it. Correct. Thank you. I'm right again. There does not need to be a red challenge flag in anybody's sock when we're talking. You understand? <laughs> you understand that, Quentin? Got it. Thank you. We're back in 60 ticks of the clock with Mike Pereira. Your phone calls as well will be taken here on a show that has David Johnson and Taylor Lautner visiting the studio. Football fans, get wrapped up in your favorite team with Denali NFL Blankets by the Northwest Company, sold at EliteTeam.com. Softer, 44% bigger, made in the United States of America. Elite Team Blankets are the real deal, machine washable. The blankets are two blankets hand-sewn together with technology that keeps you comfortable in any temperature, including in the air conditioning. My Jets Blanket, Michigan Blanket, a permanent home in my man cave. Shop EliteTeam.com and save 10% with promo code RICH. Elite Team, the official blanket of pure fandomonium. Brockman, if you could drape yourself in that Patriots blanket all day, you'd and it was socially acceptable, you would do that walk around like that, correct? This is the blanket of victory. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Mike Perry, we could make you we could make you a yellow one, or would you like a red one? Would you prefer a yellow for the for the flag that you throw for a penalty or red for a challenge? Which one would Does it got to be one color? I, why can't I go half yellow, half red? You could, we could do that, sure. Yeah. But you wouldn't know which one to throw. You know what I mean? Or well, then here's you're what protected. we could do. You could claim it's no. either one. Here's what we could do. If you had a choice to make your own video booth that we would drape in one of these Denali NFL blankets made by the Northwest Company, if we could do that, and then put either Ed Hockley on the side or, um, uh, gosh, which other, which other Sterator? referee? Sterator? No, uh, what about, what, why am I blanking on my guy's name who went ice fishing in Minnesota all the time? Who used to be? Bernie Kukar! Yes, Bernie Kukar. 
Oh, definitely Bernie Kukar. A Bernie Kukar blanket. Bernie Kukar. Law, can you yeah. send that to those folks? Well, well, since I did a Ned Hockley one, it'd be like his jersey, extra small. <laughs> uh, red Cashin. No, it's a Smedium. Yeah, Red Cashin. Who was a referee that when you were trying to be a referee that you're like, I want to be like that guy? Who was your mentor? Um, I, I, I was I was a huge Jerry Markbright fan. I really was. Which is why you got him I on really, the back of your book. Yeah, well, the other guys wouldn't talk to me for the book but no I'm only kidding I just I was a Jerry Mark Bright fan he just had that look of like really like he was really enjoying what he was now doing. do you do you hear from officials saying you're too tough on us no you don't I, I'm media they're not allowed to talk to me but I you know you must, I mean no I, come I've on always, now you talk I've, to refs I've you talk always, to officials Mike I, right? I've always, I, not really not much I mean they were they've been told not to talk to me I mean in a playoff game a couple of years ago I, I was flying into wherever it was it was it may have been Baltimore and one of the officials was on the plane and he said hey why don't you come to have a cup of coffee with us before our meeting the mm -hmm. next day see everybody there I said I'd love to then I get a call that said you well we can't have coffee with you in the mm -hmm. morning you're the media you're the media. <gasps> you are. you're the media Mike you are the media media you are but no, they don't. I mean, look, at they don't like to be, you know, put be disagreed with. And, and I always said to them, look, I'm not going to use harsh words. I never say like yes. some of our guys, that was a blown call. It was horrible. That was a miserable call. How did they miss it? Although the one in Cal, Texas was pretty damn miserable, yeah, Mike. I mean, no, now, how does something like this happen where they go under official review, they look at it in college, and you can clearly see the Texas player pick up the, the football, albeit after a couple of beats, yeah. and hand it to the ref and say that this was not recovered in a timely fashion and also they could not tell completely who recovered the football. How is that at all possible when you look at it in replay? Yeah, I, I mean, look, I, I talked to the Pac-12 on this and, and they say it wasn't, they call it the immediate action afterwards. Um, I, I don't agree. I mean, I think it is enough an immediate reaction. I mean, come on. If the player is stupid enough to drop the ball at the one-yard line, why are we going to protect him by saying, well, it wasn't in the immediate action after the play? The ball hadn't even stopped rolling in that case. Yes, a couple of players ran by it, but, you know, I, I personally, personally think that it should have been Texas's ball with the touchback, and they had the ability to uh, – to get themselves back in the game. But how, but can, you look at this, how can you look at this and say uh, uh, anything other than what it was, which was a uh, dumbass play by the player, and it should, but you shouldn't even, you shouldn't even, uh, con, even if it wasn't a boneheaded play, you shouldn't, it's not protected or not, or forget about the, you know, protecting a player. I mean, that's clearly, you know, and, the, and, the, and, and it's so damaging, Mike. It's so damaging that replay doesn't correct something and, like this. And we had the same thing that happened in the Ohio State-Oklahoma game. Mixon let the ball go. Yeah. Replay didn't even stop They didn't it. even catch it. Now, now, stop now it. in college, shouldn't every scoring play be reviewed? No, every play. Every play, no. This is not like the NFL. In the NFL, every scoring play is looked at. In college, every play is reviewed. And they didn't, they didn't see this. And, and one of the reasons why is we cut to that shot. So you saw. So you, you couldn't see in the you, live you didn't shot. You did see in that. But, but then you, you take know, a look But when at you're the... looking live, I mean, Robert Smith said that he saw it from his vantage point there in the game. When you're looking live, which is what the replay guy has to do, you know, he should have seen that there was enough question to actually stop the game. In this one, though, you know, the ball did roll dead in the end zone and nobody picked it up. Nobody picked it up. It just laid there. So, so that one, by rule, was put back to the one-yard line because it goes back to the spot of the but fumble. But after Texas picks but it up. the Texas thing, I just think that, to me, you should lean in the total opposite direction that they led in that play, which is if it's recovered at all, go with the benefit of the doubt that the ball's still alive and forget this, uh, you know, in the immediate action. That's my opinion. Mike yeah. Pereira, Fox Rules Analyst here on the Rich Eisen Show. Let's get to this whole concept of bringing targeting to the NFL, which is something that you were a proponent of right after the Cam Newton hits went down. You were on Twitter. You went on TV to say this. And I, my first thought is the targeting rule in college football is so flawed that we bring it to the NFL, people would lose their minds because it's either targeting or nothing, right? When you call targeting, that's a, you either... That's, that's the whole issue in college is there's no in-between. There's no in between. It's either targeting and you're out or it's nothing. So it's not like, for example, you've got running into the kicker and roughing the kicker. Um, you used to have a five yard face mask, 15 yard face mask. Here there's no in between. And I think it's too vague and I think it's hurt college football. But the intent to me is 
good. And we yes. talked about that a yes. little bit. You know, I'm starting to believe when I see like the shots um, on Cam Newton, I'm starting to think that penalty yards and money don't deter enough. So the it, question can be, in my, can, you, can you take a version of the targeting and say the flagrant type one targets like this, type the one Stewart target, hit. helmet to helmet, Brandon Marshall's hit, that type one where it's launch helmet to helmet, make those type one, let replay get involved, um, and eject, and eject. Not and only, but, and eject but it's also got to be not only for the game, it's got to be for at least a half of the next game, Mike, because with, we were discussing this on the air the other day when Ed Hockley took Tyrod Taylor out of the game, and I got some f hits on Twitter, and I mentioned it to Marshall Falk and Michael Irvin and Steve Mariucci, who's on the player uh, safety advisory board for the NFL, that if players can start figuring out I can knock out the number one quarterback at a crucial part of the game. If they do want to use this concussion protocol as a loophole, there needs to be an ejection deterrent, not only for the game, but also for the next one, too, to I make think, sure I that think, we're all buttoned up here. I think that's the key, that if it happens in the second half or happens at the end of the game, like Stewart's hit on, on Cam, you're out for the game and you're out for the second half. If it happens in the first half, okay, you're out for the first half, out for the entire second half. The college rule, remember now, that's the automatic ejection. But how many players do you have on a college roster? 80, uh, 100. Yeah, I know, right. You know, you're talking about a 46-man roster in the NFL, so you lose one player, it makes a difference. And if it carries over to the next week, you know, and he's out for the first half, do you in a, make him inactive for the whole game, or do you hold well, his No, spot? no, 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 hold on you a minute. Got, no, no, that, now we got to button up on that front, too. You cannot make him inactive. He must be an active member of your 46 the next week. So it is something that the, the team needs to be penalized, too, not just the player. Once again. you got to button it all up here. Once again, you have convinced me that you're on top of this. You're absolutely right. Well, but here's the issue, Mike Pereira. How – how can this be made to happen in the NFL? You know that room, the owner's room, and the also the coaches are in there too. Presidents are in there. The Players Association would probably need a, a, at least a, a, some players will chime in on this front. How possible can something like this be? Oh, I think, it, I think it's possible. I think, you know, if you look at it right now, I mean, look at the college targeting rule. And, I mean, isn't it fair to say that the colleges really protect their players more than the NFL? Because of the fact that Sometimes. they have this rule, we don't like it because it's too vague. But you know, uh, I, I think you can do it if you truly, and I do believe, if you truly want to work on, you know, cutting these injuries down for head and neck injuries, concussions. I think you can do it. I think you, the message has worked because if you look at a game like I look at a game, I now see many, many instances where defensive players would have taken shots and now they don't. I see many instances where they turn their head and lower the shoulder, but I'm still seeing too many that still they take the launch and the direct helmet and helmet shots like we saw on that Thursday night game. And I think the ultimate deterrent where the coaches and everybody are going to get involved is ejection and you're minus a player. And I think it's, I think it's possible. You know, if somebody proposes it, mm -hmm. here's the deal. If somebody proposes it, the one thing that the ownership group at the meeting – very seldom do they reject a proposal that's player safety related. Mike Pereira, thanks for coming on. Everybody go by after further review right now in bookstores and online right now, and we'll see you on Fox Big and Little. Okay, Mike? You got it. Thanks for coming in. That's Mike Great Pereira. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.